Hi guys, today we're going to talk about complex fractions and more specifically how they help us or how we use them to find unit rates or um, other ratios with fractions in them. And before we get started, let's first do a quick review of unit rate or unit cost in some of these problems. And that is basically when you take a ratio um, that you're given, for example, a number one, a car travels 213 miles in six hours. Um, and turn that into a ratio or a rate that has a one in the denominator. So if we drive 213 miles in six hours, the question would be, how many miles can I drive in one hour? Okay, and to do that, it's just like simplifying or creating equivalent fractions. Um, when you take a six, or what do I do to six to get to one? Well, you need to divide by six. So you're gonna have to do the same thing here. Whatever you do to the numerator, you have to do to the denominator. The only difference is you may not get whole numbers in the numerators and the denominators like we're used to using. So take a second now, pause the video, and complete numbers one through four in your notes. Okay, let's check our work. Go ahead and check your work. If you have any questions, circle them and make sure you bring them up during class tomorrow. Now let's move on to some rates that will have complex fractions in them, or what that means is a fraction in the numerator or denominator. For example, a pickup truck travels 45 miles on two and a third gallons of gasoline. So what's the unit rate? Well, we're comparing miles to gallons. So the number of miles needs to go on top of our ratio. The number of gallons will go on the bottom. And a complex, uh, complex fraction is when there is a fraction or a mixed number in the numerator or denominator. So in order to do this, we need to make our denominator one or find one gallon. So we basically need to divide both the numerator and denominator by the denominator. And in order to do that, when we're dividing fractions, we need to turn our mixed numbers into improper fractions first, okay? We want to make the denominator one, just like finding a unit rate. So when I turn that into an improper fraction, I have seven over three. Now I need to divide the numerator and denominator by seven thirds. Well, when I divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So instead of dividing by 7 thirds, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the reciprocal of 7 thirds, which is 3 sevenths. This will give me a 1 in the denominator, which is what I'm looking for if I'm finding a unit rate. And then I'd have to multiply 35 times 3 sevenths, which will give me 19 and 2 sevenths miles for one gallon. Or it can be written 19 and 2 sevenths miles per gallon. Either of these uh, solutions can be, or these solutions can be written either way. Let's look at another example. Susan can run three and two thirds miles in 30 minutes. What's her unit rate? We're comparing miles to minutes. So since miles comes first in the problem, I'm gonna put miles on top in my ratio which means I'm really looking for how many miles she can run in one minute. Well, to do that, I need to make my denominator one. So what do I need to do to 30 to get to one? Divide by 30, or multiply by, uh, by 1 30th. So in order to do that, I wanna turn this improper or this mixed number into an improper fraction, 11 thirds, then I can divide by 30 or multiply by 1 30th. Because remember, all whole numbers really have that one in their denominator. When I do that, I get one minute in the bottom, which is what I'm looking for when I'm making a unit rate, to have the denominator one. Then I multiply my numerator by the same thing I multiplied the denominator by, 1 30th. And that gives me 11 90ths of a mile per minute. A snail moves three-fourths of an inch, inches comes first, so that will go on top, 
in four-fifths of a minute. Since minute comes second, it will go on, my, on the bottom or in the denominator. Now, I need to make my denominator 1. So I'm going to divide by 4 fifths or multiply by 5 fourths. These, when I multiply straight across, I'll get 20 over 20, which is 1. So I have 1 minute in the denominator, which is what I need, so that's good. Then I need to multiply 3 fourths inches by 5 fourths to get 15 sixteenths inches per minute. Now it's your turn. On the next slide, pause the video and complete the four problems in the work section of your WSQ. Don't forget to write a detailed summary and ask a question that you have or that might extend someone else in the class's thinking. Now pause the video. We are done with this lesson. You can go back and watch any portion of this video as many times as you need to, or the entire video.